Hey guys, just a quick video to show you how to set up your InDesign document with individual spreads so that later you can use the book feature to combine them for a PDF for your printer. So we're in InDesign right here. I'm gonna go ahead and select new file. And then you might have recent items here. I just ignore those. You can also look at the presets for the different sizes in these different tabs up here. But I'm going to show you to set it up from scratch as if those presets don't exist. So that way, if you need to do a custom size, you know how to. The first thing is I like to switch over from picas, which we usually use in yearbook and in graphic design, to inches because the document that we're going to be doing is letter size, which is in the US 8.5 by 11 inches. And so since inches is the unit of measurement that that document comes in, we're going to go ahead and leave it at inches just because we can double check and make sure it's right. You can also toggle back and forth and go back to picas if you're comfortable with that. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it in inches. We're also gonna make sure that orientation is up and down or portrait versus landscape because typically magazines are in that orientation, but if you wanna switch it, when you click this, it'll automatically flip those dimensions to whatever you've told it to be without having to go and do it manually, which is kind of nice. I'm also going to put a name in here. I'm just gonna call it magazine spread, spread for right now. Um, and here's where the settings really, really matter. So the first thing is we are doing a spread. I'm going to talk about the cover and the back cover in a second, but for the actual spread, um, like an internal page, we want to make sure that it's two pages. So with InDesign, it is designed for publications. So you don't have to worry about what the effective spread size is, like 11 by 17. Keep in mind those two size pages. It's already built into the software to know that they're side by side. And so that's what that little checkbox next to the page count is, is facing pages is that you want them bedded up to each other. So that way when you open it, it's left and right side pages. So you want your spreads to have two pages and then make sure you hit facing pages. And then also make sure you hit the start number is page two. Otherwise, page one is gonna be at the top and then you're gonna have two and three. If you think about any book, page one is always that right side or the cover, and then two and three is the first open spread. So we're gonna start at page two, and then you can put a primary text frame. It's just an empty text box on the whole page. I'm gonna leave that off because I don't know what I'm gonna put on the page, and obviously I can add my own text frames later. And then if you design your magazine with columns, you can add those here and that'll apply to the page itself. I like to leave that off because I don't like designing with columns, um, but you can do that if that's what your students are used to. And then for your margins, you can set those here. I like to do a, a 0.5 margin all the way around the outside, so top, bottom, and outside, and then inside, that could be a little bit smaller because you're in the gutter, um, maybe a quarter of an inch or so. But um, remember, if you click that and then you click off of it, if this little lock is linked, then it's linking all four of those. So you want to make sure I'm going to go ahead and put it back on 0.5. I'm going to click to unlink it. And then we're going to say the inside, we want it to be 0.25. And then when I click off, it will only change that one. So that one I think is good. Again, that's something you can easily change later. Bleed is really, really important. So with your printer, if you're gonna have any elements that bleed off the edge of the page, so typically this is the full page photo on the cover, this is going to be any sort of design element that comes off, whether it's a picture or it's a line or it's a box or it's something. If anything is bleeding off the edge, you need to have bleed included in your document. This is on top of your final finish size. So if your final finish size is eight and a half by 11, InDesign is gonna add an allowance all the way around on purpose so that way your elements can reach that bleed line. So um, print, most printers like this to be an eighth of an inch, which is 0.125 of an inch. And so you can click that and I had my linked um, size there so it changed it to all of them. You can ignore slug. That is a little bit of information at the bottom of the PDF that is just information for the printer. It's not printed or anything. It's just like communication with the printer. And typically these days um, with commercial printing and digital printing and stuff like that, we don't need the slug area. Your printer will let you know, but typically you don't have to worry about that. You can go ahead and select preview if you wanna see what it looks like behind this window, which sometimes is helpful for students as they're visualizing how their spread is coming out to make sure that they are creating the right size. But if you don't want to, you don't have to, you can just go ahead and hit create. Once you hit create, your, your layout should look like this. So there's a couple of things that I wanna point out about this document to make sure that you know that it's set up right. 
The first is the white space is going to be your paper. That's the most obvious. Once you zoom in, there'll be a black line here in the middle. That is your gutter. That's the space in between your two pages where the fold of the magazine is. The purple and the pink, those are your margins, the 0.5 around and the 0.25 in the middle, the gutter. And then the red line right here is your bleed. So that is going to be the document that, or how it should look when you set up your document. Whenever you are applying elements, so if I'm applying a picture here, I'm just gonna fill it with a random picture. Um, where's my sample, photos, academics, whatever. We're gonna say that I filled it with this picture. Fitting, fill frame proportionally. If I want this to go all the way to the edge of the page, well then I have to remove that stroke because that's so ugly. Um, you wanna make sure it goes all the way to that red line right there. So whenever you're doing a bleed, um, don't worry about it being in, in the document uh, like size that you're creating. You create the document at its finish size and then your settings will apply that bleed allowance. It'll apply those margins. It'll apply the fold, all of that sort of stuff. Like you don't have to worry about creating that. Um, you just have to worry about using the document settings appropriately. So if you have something that goes off in bleeds, make sure it goes to that line. And then, you know, just so you can kind of further visualize how bleed works, when you hit W on the keyboard, it will preview the image. And so you can make sure that that image actually does go off, but once it's previewed, it gets rid of the bleed so you can see and make sure it's in the right spot. Okay, so then what you wanna do, once you have this document created, file save, which I know it's not in the screen, but it's off to the side, sorry about that. Um, and then once you are you know, in your saving menu and you're navigated to the spot where you want it to go, I'm gonna go sample newspaper, Right here, there's a drop down and it talks about your format. And so your format by default is an InDesign document. The majority of the documents you work with are going to be InDesign documents. But we're gonna save this as an InDesign template because what we wanna do is be able to replicate this spread over and over and over again, or duplicate it, replicate it, um, to be used multiple times to account for all your pages. And so we're gonna hit save and then, and the next time that I open this document, instead of it being magazine spread INDT, which is InDesign template, it's gonna show up as untitled, which is means it's a brand new document and before you are able to close out of that document, you're going to have to save it somewhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and X out of here and open up our template. So as you can see, it says untitled. So before we go and save this as our you know new document that we're using, we're creating from our template, I wanna make sure of a couple of things. The first is the page numbers. So in the file menu, if you go to document setup, like we set up from the template, the first page number, we're starting with this page number two. If you are doing a magazine, you're probably going to have between 12 and 40 something pages, 100 pages, there's, you know, the sky's the limit. And so we're probably not gonna have 100 pages in a magazine, but you're gonna have more than just one spread, right? And so for the first one, we want it to be page two, and we want it to uh, be page two and three. So we're gonna hit okay. So then when you hit file, save, you are gonna go and call it something that makes sense for your school newspapers. So it might be something like issue two underscore two dash three, and that has the page number. And so then when you hit save, it's gonna go and call it issue two, two dash three. And then you're gonna close that and you're gonna open up the template one more time. It's gonna be the exact same thing. And then you're gonna do file save as, or file save, because it hasn't been saved previously. And then you're gonna do issue two. I like to just click on it and then uh, page three, so it'd be four and five. So now that it's saved, I like to just start by saving it so I know that it's in the right place, but there's a couple of things we need to fix. The first is the page number. So up at the top, when you go file, document setup, instead of the start page being two, we need the start page to be four. So now the left side is gonna be four and the right side is gonna be five. So go ahead and save that close it, and you're gonna do that again all the way through the rest of your pages. Then you need to save one for your cover and for your back cover. So there's two ways to do this. You can do it so your back cover is on the left side and your front cover is on the right side, and that will typically be fine for your printer because they'll still have all the data that they need. Sometimes your printer is gonna require that you have the first page be alone and the last page be alone. And if you're using the book feature, it's easier to have the first page by itself and the last page or the back cover by itself too. So instead of the template that we have here, we're gonna go back into our document setup settings, file document setup, and you're going to change your number of pages to one and your start page to one for the cover. 
and then you're gonna hit okay. And that is going to be the cover. The only thing you have to keep in mind is when you do the back cover, the margin on the side is where that staple is going to be. And so you just have to keep in mind that there's, you know, if you're moving your margin around uh, from the inside, you know, obviously it didn't change here because this used to be the inside margin, but now it's the front cover. And so we need to make them maybe even all the way around. So I'm gonna go back into document setup and change this outside or this inside from 0.25 to 0.5 and hit okay and then you can see it's all even and now when i save this one i'm gonna go to issue two underscore instead of two and three we're gonna say underscore one and then you hit save this is the exact same way that you would set up your documents if you're designing pages instead of spreads in a magazine typically you want to be, still be designing spreads so if your students can work together to design full left and right side spreads cohesively instead of a left and a right however i know in a magazine especially because you have limited real estate and you might have an ad on the side or whatever i know that that's not always the case so if you're working with individual pages with each student, then this would be the way to set that up. You would just need to adjust your margins to reflect the gutter so they know what, you know, if their page is on the left side or the right side. It's a little bit more complicated because they have to visualize that instead of seeing it. The other thing you can do with your students, which I've done sometimes as well, if they have trouble visualizing it, is leave the spread as is with the left and the right page, but just mark which one is theirs and which one is not. So I put a big text box on that that says, not your page, ad goes here, don't design here, this is your page or whatever. Um, but then whenever you go to run the book PDF, you'll need to delete that page. So it's a little bit more work afterward, but sometimes it's helpful with students because they get confused about what they're actually looking at versus you know, and a spread, they're able to see the left and right side. So now I'm just gonna go through and I'm going to make all the spreads for a 12 page magazine. Okay, now I've made it all the way through page 10 and 11 and I'm gonna need page 12, which is the back cover. So I'm actually just gonna open up the first page, the cover, and I'm going to save as and save it as page 12 because it already has those settings for the single page. Okay, so now that we have your document created, your students are gonna work in them, they're gonna create all their edits, they're gonna save all their files, they're gonna make sure that the links are not missing, and we're gonna say that we're ready to send it to the printer. So we're gonna create an InDesign book, and then we're going to export a PDF from that. So this is not an option that's available right here. You have to go over to File, to New, and then select Book, and it's going to give you where you wanna save the book. So we're just gonna call this Issue 2 for right now, because obviously all the documents are gonna to pertain to Issue 2. So you're gonna hit Save, and then this window is going to come up that is going to be your book options. And so right now you can see that it says issue two here, but it looks like a blank InDesign document. So what we need to do is we need to attach all of our documents into this book. And so you can use this little plus sign down right here or this menu with the little hamburger style and hit add document. I'm just going to use the plus sign and then we're going to go and select all of the pages that pertain to our issue two. So we're not gonna select the template and we're not gonna select the book. We're just gonna do the actual InDesign documents. And we're gonna hit open. And it should automatically put them in order in the pages that in the way that they've been named. And so if you've named them consistently, then they, you should be good to go. And then you'll see over here, this is the actual page number in the document. So it should say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and this should say twelve. Um, I did this on purpose incorrectly so you can see that it's wrong, but we need this to reflect page twelve so that way it shows up for the printer as the last page. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this to open it. And I'm gonna go back into the document setup and change it from the start page of one to the start page of 12. Then we're gonna hit okay. And you're gonna see that that's been updated to 12, but you see that there's a little dot right here saying the document is open. That's totally fine. We're gonna just go ahead and save it and then we're gonna close it and we have our book feature. Uh, we have that circle gone away. So then everything now looks correct and we're ready to export our PDF. So we're gonna select all of the documents. So you can click on one of them and hold down shift and select the last one. And then you're gonna go to your hamburger menu and select export book to PDF. There's going to be a window that comes up that shows you where you wanna save it. So we're gonna go ahead and save it in my newspaper folder and make sure in the drop down that you save it as Adobe PDF print. If you save it as interactive, it's going to lower the resolution, also lower the file size, but that's not gonna be what you want for print. It's gonna be what you want if you're uploading this to issue or you're emailing it, it's gonna save it as a lot smaller quality, um, a lot lower quality, smaller file size. And so for print, we definitely want it to be the highest quality. So go ahead and hit save. 
And then this menu is gonna come up and give you so many options. So a lot of this is gonna depend on what your printer needs and they will tell you. Typically, they will need pages versus spreads. So spreads is gonna export it as a left and a right page, which might be helpful if you are exporting for interactive and you need it to be you know, uploaded to issue or you want people to view it uh, as left or right pages. But for printing, typically we want pages. Honestly, you can ignore most all of this um, but you do want to pay attention to this one, the marks and bleeds. And so you can do what's called all printers marks and it'll mark exactly where your bleed is going to be, where your crops are going to be, all the registration, color bars, all of that. Typically printers don't need that anymore and they just need this one, the use document bleed settings. So when we have this selected, the bleed settings and the bleed allowance is included in the PDF. And so the printer knows that if you included that bleed allowance at the settings that they've said, that they can print that at a bigger size and cut it down to account for those bleeds. If we don't have it checked, then the PDF is going to be the exact finish size. And so basically you applied bleed for no reason because the printer is going to likely print it at exactly the right size, still cut it down and because they're printing on bigger paper maybe, but they're not going to have that bleed allowance. And so the elements aren't gonna be printed edge to edge the page. So once you have those set or set to whatever your printer has specified, you're gonna hit export and then it's gonna generate a PDF and that's going to include all the pages that you have selected here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it just so you can take a look. Um, there's no content in this PDF, so it doesn't really, it's kind of hard to see, but you can tell that there are individual pages here in my document all the way to page 12. So this is a really helpful way using the book feature to use InDesign to create all of your individual pages so your students can work on them without having to export them and import them into another document or copy and paste your content into a master document. Like I said, InDesign is made for publication. So if you are not sure how to set something up, definitely reach out, I'm happy to help you. Um, I also have a course on how to use InDesign for student publications where we go over this as well as a lot of other things that will help you in creating your documents and setting them up and creating them correctly. So that way when you go and print them, they do print accurately instead of, you know, sometimes images go missing and stuff like that. It just happens. It's the nature of publications, especially student publications. Um, but like I said, I'm happy to help if you guys have any questions. If you head over to organizedadvisor.com, there is a contact button right up at the top that goes straight to my inbox. So feel free to reach out if you need anything at all. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Bye!